To me, it's, it's a larger commentary on the different relationships to pain and suffering. And what is pain and suffering and what is death? And to me, it's like preserving human life above all things, even over morality, seems to be the proposition of the film. I think one legitimate point is that God alone judges the heart. True. So it may be that if someone denounces Christ or lives an immoral life, mm. that in his mercy, he can envelop you. Right. But that doesn't change the fact that the act was immoral. Right. And he would not want you to commit that moral act, immoral act. So the character experiencing love mm. as he apostatizes mm. from Christ it's not because he did the right thing. Mm. It's because Christ loves him. Right. I think, yeah, there's, there are obviously, like, I guess, unlike some other Christian denominations, like, we learn that there are different degrees of sin. Sure. And so you could say that, so if you, if you apostatize because someone's, you know, you're walking down the street, someone says, do you believe in God? And you say, no, no way. That's, that, I think that's a lot different than if you're under extreme torture certainly apostatize. So there is there is a gradient, but you know, at the end of the day, there's, there's it a, it a line that you have to hold. I think. Right. It, it doesn't change the objective value of the act itself. Right. Moral, moral theology will tell you that the, the act, like for what goes into a mortal sin, the act itself, mm -hmm. the intentions and the circumstances. Right. So in terms of, but only in terms of mitigating culpability and responsibility. And right. we can't even assess that. Yeah. Only God assesses right, that. We're, right. It's basically a statement on how God assesses, like the state of our soul. Right. But the the object, like you cannot, if if an act is intrinsically evil, objectively evil, it can never become a good act, mm -hmm. no matter what the circumstances and and the intentions of the of the act committer. Right. So I mean, we have a long tradition of martyrdom, going back to I mean the Book of Maccabees, <laughs> where right. a mother is saying, "Hey, sons." Please don't denounce God. Go ahead and die. Yeah, yeah. Right? And the character in the film was in much the same position. Right. And he said, no, step on it. Trample it. Apostatize mm. to those people. That's not actually loving them. Right, right. It's not actually loving them. And I wonder... I wonder... You know, Scorsese does present in the middle of the film... Mm the properly Catholic way to approach the problem of suffering and evil. Mm -hmm. But the protagonist, in some ways, I would argue, from a true Catholic perspective, fails in that regard in the end. Mm -hmm. But before that, the peasants mm -hmm. have the right idea. They were actually martyred. Right. You know, the ones in the, in, in the ocean, right? And then I remember when, when he was first caught and captured, and you, you see, you see um, well, you see sort of the first sign of doubt when um, he starts questioning after they died, like did they die for the wrong reasons they could have lived? Mm -hmm. And then uh, he, when he's caught sort of in the wild when he's on his own and he gets put with the other peasants, he's like, why are you so calm? Mm -hmm. Don't you know you're about to die? And she's like, well, I mean, this life's like pretty terrible. Yeah. Like if I die, which will be very quick, like I'll be with God in mm -hmm. heaven. Like, isn't that better? <laughs> yeah. like, she's right. Yeah. But he doesn't get that. Mm. So I, to me, it's it's a larger commentary on the different relationships to pain and suffering. And what right. is pain and suffering and what is death? And to me, it's like preserving human life above all things. Even over morality seems to be the proposition of the film. I mean, it, it's, it's pretty clear that denouncing God is is an immoral act. I mean, Christ right. says, he who denies me here, right. I will denounce in front of my Father in heaven. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't know there's one. No, 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 no. I just want to, I just want to add that point. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, but Scorsese is offering the idea that um, avoid suffering, even if it means uh, denouncing your, your faith. Yeah. I think yeah that, that that's something, and again maybe if you're if you're lapsed in your Catholicism you 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 kind of don't uh, see that sort of tradition over the, the of the martyrs over the years and 
and everything. But yeah, it's, I mean, it's, I guess we live in a culture that, um, except in some circumstances, preser preserving life um, is kind of like the highest good, preserving your own life selfishly. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, we, we might not believe that in, in the cases of abortion and things like that, but preserving life is important. But uh, yeah, when you, when you live only for, I guess this goes back to what we were saying about selfishness. And if you live only for yourself, um, because what, what were they, what, what were the apostate priests living for after their apost well, apostasy? I, I, I feel like the actors in the film portrayed how much shame they felt. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, all they were, they were stuck doing from, from then on was, uh, writing, uh, like whatever they were told to basically. And, right. and, uh, they look like zombies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think they did do a good job. They weren't them. filled with life there. Yeah. Um, and, you know, what did you make of the attempt to offer the Japanese viewpoint? Hmm. Kind of the, the thing about, um, the different wives of that, uh, yeah, things like that. Yeah, and I guess also they yeah, have the swamp and the swamp like analogy. That. The swamp. And that, it, listen, the Christianity works in your place, but it doesn't work in our place. Yeah. And you know, um, and then you know, so, some of Liam Neeson's characters, Father Ferreira's uh, perspective was incredibly dangerous to a Catholic worldview. Mm. I mean, he was saying that the the uh, the local Japanese people never accepted. Right. Catholicism as you understand it. Right. It was absorbed into their syncretic view of reality that this was just a Christ and God is just one God of among, among many. Yeah. There's a, a language issue. There's a translation issue. They don't, they don't even really believe. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, what, what are you talking about? And then, you know, and then, and then later on, what pride you have, you know, were you identifying with Christ mm. in the garden? That's so prideful. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's like this dark temptation. Like, no, like we're invited into mm. the Paschal mystery. Yeah. You know, and he, he, not because we are deserving or prideful, but he came to suffer with us to give us a model. And so we relate to his experience of suffering in some ways. He, it gives shape and adds meaning to it. And that's what he was experiencing in that cell right before his death. Right. Or, or not his death, but his temptation to die. Yeah, yeah. And, and but like some of the, the messages and, and, Liam Neeson being the mouthpiece, the mouthpiece for those messages, I thought were really problematic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I was um, thinking throughout it that, so Buddhism is kind of the thing that they were making everyone submit to. Like yes. you, you had to register with a Buddhist temple um, yes. as a person, as a citizen and so forth. Buddhism itself is a foreign religion from India yes. that the Japanese took and adapted. And, yes. you know, there was kind of a Zen Buddhist line and things like that. I'm, not, I'm no expert in Buddhism, but yeah. um, that was, you know, absorbed and made kind of personal to the Japanese. And I think what Liam Neeson, I mean, you don't want, uh, you know, heresies. You don't want uh, really fundamental flaws with the faith that distort the religion so much that, yeah, it's something completely, completely foreign. Right. But I think that, you know, any culture that receives, uh, receives the, the Catholic faith, they have to make it their own. Definitely. And I think that, you know, um, God, God uses kind of our whole history, the whole human history sure. to, to bring us. And, um, you know, some of the, the traditions, some of the religious practices, even in pagan religions, mm -hmm. um, you know, can kind of be claimed by Catholicism as something that can be used for helping people learn. And I think even, even when he says, you know, all of our missionary work was pointless because the Japanese people were, were worshiping the sun all along. Right. Basically. Yes. You don't want Japanese people to worship the sun, but if that's their next step toward yeah. understanding that you can build upon and you say, well, maybe it's not this, but it's, it's actually this. It's preparatory. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, that's that's valuable in and of itself, too, I think. Yeah, but it is not... I, I, I thought um, Garfield's character, Father... Um, what's his name? Rodriguez. Rodriguez, yeah. yeah. Uh, when he was uh, debating with the governor, with the inquisitor, right. he actually offered the right perspective. Mm -hmm. it, the Catholic faith, the Christian faith, is it cannot be considered one faith among many. Mm -hmm. 
And it, like with this overview, it's like it's at a permissible standpoint among many permissible right. standpoints and beliefs. No, it's a radical, it's a monotheistic revolution. Pope Benedict talks about this, about the three different mm. ways. Like there's skepticism, I don't believe in any of it. Mm. Then there's the the syncretic sort of pantheistic mm. absorption into the all one, right. you know, or, in, or into the all nothing. And that's like a lot of the Eastern faiths. Right. And then there's the monotheistic revolution, which says that God from outside of space and time enters in and tells us about himself and radically uh, um, challenges the ideas of a paganistic worldview. Yeah. It's not absorbed into something different. It's right. saying this is the truth. Right. And right. if truth is truth, it's true for everyone in all cases. There's no way it's true in Portugal, but not in Japan. Right. Right. And and the 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 I understand a Buddhist worldview, mm. which is that it's all fine. It's all fine. Christ Christ it's great. It's great if you like Christ, but I don't have to I don't yeah. have to, and that's okay too. But a, a, a monotheistic approach or a Christian approach would say, no, your view is preparatory for the fullness of truth, but you don't, you don't truly have it yet. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I thought Rodriguez, like w w on his knees when they were debating, mm. offered the right perspective, and then, I mean, just that those that dark moment of temptation, everything mm. coming his way, I think he succumbed to it. Yeah. Well, it's. I mean, I guess it's the question then becomes, you know, if you're if you're in his position, or if any of us, if any of us are in his position, under temptation, under suffering, under the pain of suffering, under the suffering of others. Sure. What do you do? Yeah. How do you act in that in that position? Well, I mean, <laughs> for me, like, I'd probably fail. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know about me either. No, but... I mean, I, I mean, I would, I would hope that I would respond to the grace that was offered to me to stay the course. I mean, I, I certainly am not. Judging him, which again I think is right. the the point of the one of the points of the film, which is who knows God alone judges. Mm. That's a very complex moral di dilemma, and there were significant psychological and physical uh, stressors placed upon him, which probably hampered both his intellect and his will. Right, let God sort that out. I don't know, yeah, yeah. but in terms of it being uh, the norm or what is acceptable, that's what I I have an issue with. Yeah. But I I really really admired. Um, the faith of the peasants. Yeah. You know, they're, they're longing for the priests to administer the sacraments and they didn't actually worship the priests. Right. But they yeah. reverenced them. Yeah. Because right. of what they were able to provide. Right. They knew and they lived so long in a world where they didn't have mass, they didn't have confession. Right. The, the testament to that is that in reality, uh, so after the persecu the persecutions lasted for, I guess over over two centuries, mm -hmm. and then in like the l kind of latter half of the eighteen hundreds, finally things were modernized a little bit. Finally, foreigners were come were allowed to come back into Japan, and um, there was I think again it was an Italian priest who came to Nagasaki to start up a church in like the eighteen sixties. And he came to this neighborhood to build a church, mainly for the foreigners that were living there. Like the Dutch came, or, or the Portuguese came back, and you know, so there were a lot of foreigners. Well, we need to have a church. And there was a group of Catholics, or, or there, there were a group of Japanese people who came to him, and they said, "We're Catholics. Like mm -hmm. we've been for the past like two hundred years, we've been baptizing each other, and we've been carrying without any guide, out, without any guide. Yeah. And here we are. We'd like to be accepted. Like we'd mm -hmm. like to be formally baptized, I guess." And and accepted into the church. And actually, it's interesting. There's uh, there's a few islands off the coast of Japan even today, where I guess because of a disconnect or whatever, they they never like rejoined with the church. Hmm. So now their practices are still kind of these practices of hidden Christians, where hmm. they worship like statues that are kind of like the Buddha, but they're disguised. They're they're Mary, but they're disguised to look like Buddhist yeah, images yeah, and yeah. stuff. So there's kind of like this sort of uh, yeah, like remnant of, of that time even, like to show that, that that history lasted so long. Yeah. What was the character's name, the Japanese character's name that um, kept repenting? Oh, uh, Kichijiro. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So what did you think of Kichijiro and his story <laughs> and his consistent moral failings and then yeah. uh, request for repentance? And he described himself as a weak man. Yeah, yeah, and uh, bemoaned the fact that he was uh, living in 
a time of persecution because it right. was bound to make him fail. Yeah. And and then he had these periods of repentance afterwards. Mm. But you're left to wonder how deep were they? But, yeah. but the, up until a point, because the most interesting request was when it was years later. Right. That suggests to me that all the other ones were real. Hmm. What'd you make of him? Well, I guess the the gut feeling is that Kichijiro is all of us hmm. to the to the extent that um, Andrew Garfield's character kind of represents Christ in in the context. Mm-hmm. We always just keep <laughs> crawling back, literally. Yeah, yes. In his case, literally crawling back. Yeah. Um, so that's something we can learn from, but. Yeah, his uh, his point about like, if I had been born in a different time, like my life could have been like if he if he would have been born, you know, before all the persecution started, and when it was actually probably popular to be a Catholic in Japan, to be a Christian in Japan, he'd be a great Christian. Yeah, he could just kind of you know co- coast by. You know, maybe he has a few crosses to bear here and there, but like, you know, he he would <laughs> he would die happily, and he'd he'd you know maybe hopefully go to heaven. And but if you're not, yeah, then what do you what do you do in that circumstance? I mean, yeah, but his failures too weren't always just a reluctance to uh, apostatize because mm. he turned them in, right, more than right. once. Yeah, so he he chose to accept the money, the the three hundred silver, right, to turn in um, Rodriguez, Father Rodri- yeah. Rodriguez, Padre, um, and then I think it alludes to the fact that he turned in the village. Um, oh, maybe. Yeah, I guess that was maybe left a little unclear, but yeah. but you could, you could suspect him, certainly. Right. And yeah, then yeah. I, we don't even know why Goto was raised to the ground. Right, right. So it would yeah. seem that he was someone that, like, gave into the temptation f- for money. Not just, yeah. I couldn't, you know, I'm scared, under pain of death, I'm going to denounce right, God. Right, yeah. It was like a whole kind of immoral system. Yeah, it's one thing to be weak, and it's the one thing to, I guess, have like this disordered nature that allow you know that that you you desire to or you you yeah you want to to uh, inform on people you want to sin you you you're attracted to the, the free sin. choice yeah. yeah free choice yeah so. yeah now you read the book did yeah. w- was that um, confession scene which occurred much later on in the book as well yes yeah it was actually okay yeah and. Uh, I don't. I think in the movie, it remains a little bit vague whether he actually administers confession or not. I think he, he kind of puts his hand on his head, but it's like, yeah, is he just blessing him? Is he just kind of praying to himself? In the book, I think he actually says like, you know, I I might be uh, disgraced in the eyes of the church, um, but seeing there is no other priest in all of Japan to administer you confession, like I will do it basically. So he never lost his faith. So, yeah, they say in the book, I think, that, like, I think he's speaking to Christ and he says, like, I, I love you, but, like, in now, in now in a new way, in a different way or something. My, my faith is, yeah. my, my love for you has changed. Yeah. And, you know, I, I guess... Um, yeah, the dialogue between him and Christ yeah. was so interesting. And, and there was a little bit of, there, were, there was some, I, I don't want to go as far as to say heresy, but mm. when... when uh, they were Scorsese was speaking for Christ. Yeah. They put the words in his mouth. I don't know if it was in, if it was in the book in this way. Yeah. But he said, I came to take away your pain. Mm. No, he didn't. Right. Right. He did not come to take our way to take away our pain. He came to suffer with us. That part mm. was right. Right. But it's like that last step. I came to take your pain away. No, yeah. he came to offer salvation and it ultimately take our pain away, but not so that we can, you know, make whatever moral decisions we yeah. want to avoid Chill pain in this life. life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that I thought yeah. was misleading and, and dangerous in terms of spiritual guidance. And, um, yeah. you know, a lot of Catholics today in the United States don't really follow much of what the church teaches. Mm-hmm. They don't know, in mm-hmm. other words, what the church teaches. And maybe their only exposure to what is spiritually healthy might come through a film like this yeah so that's kind of dangerous well I, I know as someone who wants to create media or wants to create something that people will consume in an sure. entertaining way 
I, I definitely, while I'm writing, I feel a very strong responsibility for what I'm writing, like yeah. for people that consume it. And, you know, maybe there's an age range and stuff and you suggest people don't watch this at a certain age for sure. certain content. Sure. But, but yeah, at the end of the day, um, if you risk like scandal, I guess is the proper term in, term in the church in yeah. Catholic teaching. If you risk, if you risk scandal, then um, that's kind of on you, I think, as a creator. And right. So, yeah. Um,